Let us begin our celebration of love and thanksgiving in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the joy and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. To prepare our hearts to remember and give thanks, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's gift of water reminds us of the life-giving water that Jesus speaks of in the Gospel. A proclamation from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand, as you go, the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did, in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massah and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord, let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to Him. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down and worship, let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For He is our God, and we are the people He shepherds, the flock He guides. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear His voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massah in the desert, where your fathers tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Through Jesus, God pours into our hearts what we thirst for, faith, hope, and the Spirit, the giver of life. A proclamation from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith, to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts, through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Lord, you are truly the Savior of the world. Give me living water, that I may never thirst again. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us open our minds, open our lips, and our hearts to the reading and the living of the Holy Gospel as written by St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern, and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, Give me this water, so that I may not be thirsty, or have to keep coming here to draw water. I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is coming from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship Him. God the Spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When He comes, He will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am He, the one who is speaking with you. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. My dear friends, what we heard is the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Pleasant greetings to you. Jesus told the Samaritan woman by the well, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. 
the water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So let's talk about human thirst. William Longlevishu, American journalist, describes his journey across the Sahara Desert in his book Sahara Unveiled, A Journey Across the Desert. He says that dehydration, not starvation, kills wanderers in the desert. He asserts that thirst is the most terrible of all human sufferings. He narrates the story of Lak Lak, an Algerian guide and his assistant. They were crossing the desert when their truck broke down. As their bodies dehydrated, they became willing to drink anything to quench their terrible thirst. The sun forced them into the shade under the truck, where they dug a shallow trench. Day after day they lay there. They had food but did not eat, fearing it would magnify their thirst. Lak Lak progressed from Udipsha, ordinary thirst, through bouts of hyperdipsha, meaning temporary intense thirst, to polydipsha, sustained excessive thirst, which is the kind of thirst that drives one to drink anything, including urine and blood. Longavishu's mention of these levels of thirst is interesting. I would like now to apply these categories onto the human needs human beings thirst for. To do this, we shall refer to Abraham Maslow, an American psychologist and philosopher. In his work Motivation and Personality, Maslow argues that each person has a hierarchy of needs that must be satisfied. The needs include physiological needs, safety needs, needs for love or belonging, needs for self-esteem, needs for self-actualization and the need for self-transcendence. The supply levels of thirst unto our human needs according to Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs that must be satisfied. So the first to tackle is Eudipsia. The three levels of thirst. The first is Eudipsia. Eudipsia is ordinary normal thirst. It comes from the Greek prefix eu, meaning good, and the word dipsa, meaning thirst. Literally it is good thirst, a sensation we all normally experience of dryness in the mouth related to a need or desire to drink. On a larger plane, this normal thirst in human beings may come from what Maslow identifies as the first two basic needs, namely, physiological and safety need. As such, these are personal needs. Physiological needs include foods, shelter, water, air, and clothing. Safety needs include security in life, a desire to be safe from all dangers and to ensure a life without any uncertainty. While Eudipsha is harmless thirst for these aforementioned needs, where we choose to look for their satisfaction can mean life or death. Let us look at this example. Ludwig van Beethoven. In October 2000, Dr. William J. Walsh, a scientist from Illinois, suggested that Beethoven may have poisoned himself after studying strands of hair from the body of the famous classical composer. Walsh discovered that Beethoven's body had 100 times the normal amount of lead. He concluded that Beethoven's untimely death at the age of 57 was due to lead poisoning. Beethoven's lead poisoning may have been due to many factors. One speculation was his doctor's application of lead-containing medicines to an already severely lead-poisoned man, says Walsh. Others speculate that, as a young man, he drank water with high concentrations of lead at a spa. Lead or no lead, his heavy alcohol consumption definitely resulted to cirrhosis of the liver. Unknowingly, the very things he thought were bringing him physiological relief and psychological well-being were actually slowly poisoning him to death. Abraham Maslow identifies our first two basic needs as psychological and safety needs. 
Yudipsha is ordinary normal thirst. Yudipsha is personal. Physiological needs include foods, shelter, sex, heat, water, air, and clothing. Safety needs include security in life, a desire to be safe from all dangers, and to ensure a life without uncertainty. While Eudipsia is generally harmless thirst for those aforementioned needs, where we choose to look for their satisfaction can mean life or death. Kaya let us be careful pa rin. This eudipsic thirst is equivalent to Eros love or paghangad, our need love. So, what is Jesus' water of life prescription number one for this Lenten season and the rest of our lives? Fasting. Fasting is primarily the act of willingly abstaining from some or all food, drink, or both for a period of time. Of course, fasting curves our natural, personal cravings. The second level of human thirst is hyperdipsia. The second level of thirst is hyperdipsia. Hyperdipsia, according to Stedman's Medical Dictionary, is intense thirst that is relatively temporary. On a larger plane, this temporary or temporal thirst may come from the next two basic needs, identified by Maslow, namely, love and relationship need, and the need for self-esteem. As such, these are interpersonal needs, or social needs. These refer to the human thirst to be loved, and be related to others, as well as the basic thirst to be affirmed of one's self-worth. Jennifer Strange, 28, mother of three, died trying to win a Nintendo console for her children. In January 2007, a radio station in Sacramento, California, staged a water drinking contest, promising a Nintendo Wii video game system, to the person whose bladder held out the longest. Strange did her best, but she didn't win the contest. Furthermore, several hours after the contest, Jennifer left work with a terrible headache. Later that day she was found dead in her house. An autopsy revealed that too much water had disrupted the electrolyte balance in her blood. Jennifer Strange literally died of water intoxication. This is no judgment of Strange or her needs. We cite her story in order to serve each of us a simple reminder. Hyperdipsia is harmless. But the intense passion that accompanies the search to satisfy social hyperdipsia or personal eudipsia should be well guarded. Hyperdipsia is temporary intense thirst. Hyperdipsia is relational, social, interpersonal. Hyperdipsia is harmless and may very well apply to the next two basic needs in Maslow's hierarchy, love and relationship needs, and self-esteem needs. As such, these are interpersonal needs or social needs. But the intense passion that accompanies the search to satisfy social hyperdipsia or personal eudipsia should be well guarded. This corresponds to the second stage of love philia kind of love or pagmamahal kind of love. So what is Jesus' water of life prescription number two for this hyperdipsic thirst? Almsgiving. Almsgiving is a religious rite which, in general, involves giving materially to another as an act of religious virtue. Indeed, almsgiving purifies our interpersonal relations. The third level of human thirst is polydipsia. The third phase of thirst is polydipsia. Polydipsia is a medical symptom in which the patient displays sustained excessive or abnormal thirst. 
In the absence of water, polydipsia can have a very compelling power on the hapless individual, as the story of Lak Lak we mentioned. Going back to the Sahara Desert story, radiator water was what Lak Lak and his assistant, started drinking during the polydipsia phase. Longavishu noted that, in order to survive, they were willing to drink poison. On a larger plane, this excessive thirst may come from man's need to self-actualize, and the need to self-transcend. Simply put, one needs to become what one is capable of becoming, to go beyond one's current limitations, and to strive for wholeness or holiness. And, self-transcendence is the need to relate to a bigger being or reality than the self. Centuries earlier, Saint Irenaeus already described this primordial need for man to become God's glory, to be fully human and fully alive. Indeed, man needs to go beyond himself and journey towards God. But, in the absence of God in one's thirst, this intense search for meaning, can lead him to fill this gaping God-size hole, with any of the seven deadly sins, namely, lust or extravagance, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy and pride. Remember that one of the top reported reasons for alcohol or drug abuse is that people are looking to fill an emotional hole. Other deadly ways of filling this up include overeating, promiscuous behavior, overworking, or through anger, jealousy or depression. Unfortunately, these thirst quenchers are in reality spiritual poisons, dangerous substitutes for the living water that Jesus promises. Polydipsia is sustained, excessive or abnormal thirst. I say that polydipsia is also transpersonal and metaphysical. Hmm, what do I mean by that? Well, I suspect that polydipsic abnormal thirst may come from the highest basic needs which Maslow identifies as self-actualization need and self-transcendence need. Now, to self-actualize is actually to develop or achieve one's full potential. This highest level of needs requires, therefore, for a human being to understand oneself and see the value in oneself. He tries to find himself through religion and his spiritual guidance. That is why I describe it as transpersonal, that is, going beyond your own person alone, and metaphysical, that is, going beyond one's physical thirst, a thirst for God. Maslow says that this is the area that is most meaningful in a human being's life. Polydipsic thirst corresponds to our self-actualization need, the need to become more and more what one is, the need to become what one is capable of becoming. Polydipsic thirst also responds to our self-transcendence need to go beyond our current limitations, to strive for wholeness, for holiness, to achieve our telos, our purpose in life. This definitely corresponds to our need for the third and highest kind of love, agape love, pag-ibig, or the indwelling, pakikiisa kind of love. So, what is Jesus' water of life prescription number three for this polydipsic thirst? Prayer. St. Gregory of Nyssa, a father of the church, says, Prayer is communing and conversing with God. Indeed, prayer transforms us into wellsprings of life. Let us close this sharing with this story. The story is told of a young student, who went to his spiritual teacher, and asked the question, Master, how can I truly find God? The teacher asked the student to accompany him to the river which ran by the village, 
and invited him to go into the water. When they got to the middle of the stream, the teacher said, please immerse yourself in the water. The student did as he was instructed, whereupon the teacher put his hands on the young man's head, and held him under the water. The student began to struggle. The master held him under, still. A moment passed and the student was thrashing and beating the water and air, with his arms. Still, the master held him under the water. Finally, the student was released and shot up from the water, lungs aching and gasping for air. The teacher waited for a few moments and then said, When you desire God as truly as you desired to breathe the air you just breathed, then you shall find God. The lesson is straightforward but deep. For a person who quenches his earthly and material eudipsic and hyperdipsic thirsts, with nothing but material and temporal solutions, when polydipsic thirst strikes, unknowingly, he will be most willing to take even poison. So, we offer a three living water spiritual dietary regimen. Fasting, to curb our natural personal cravings. Alms giving, to purify our interpersonal relations and prayer, to allow the living waters of God to transform us into wellsprings of life and love for others. Remember, for a person who quenches his earthly and material eudipsic and hyperdipsic thirsts with nothing but material and temporal solutions, when polydipsic thirst strikes, unknowingly, he or she will be most willing to take even poison. Please develop that polydipsic thirst only for God. May God bless you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us lift up to God our prayers. After every petition, we shall say, Father, hear us. Father, hear us. That our liturgy may be led to acts of loving service, let us pray to the Lord. Father, hear us. That people who are searching for meaning in life, may find it in Jesus, the living water, let us pray to the Lord. Father, hear us. That the leaders of the church, may consider doing the will of the Father as their food, and long to announce the gospel to the people, let us pray to the Lord. Father, hear us that the faithful departed may enjoy the peace of God's kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Father, hear us. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Father, hear us. Father, hear the prayers of your people. Send your Spirit and awaken in our hearts adoration, prayer, and thanksgiving. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, which earth is given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. 
who humble themselves to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away, O Lord, my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray now, my dear friends, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Savior. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith, that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks, and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Roberto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through our Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Coming together as God's children, 
with confidence we call on our Heavenly Father in the words of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not allow us to fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The love and peace of Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of love and peace. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus grant us healing and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Panis vivus et vitalis, hodie My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul, since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known, that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer our prayers. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the abundant spiritual blessings you bestowed upon us. We are grateful as well for the material blessings no matter how abundant or scarce they are, for our stewardship. We pray in your mighty name to break any evil seals and consecrations, curses and spells, unholy ties, links, evil relationships and bondages that had been cast to, made over, or forged through the material and monetary blessings we receive, own, and keep. Help us remember that these are given for your glory and for the greater service of the Church and of humanity. And we ask you to bless all our relationships. These are yours, O Lord, 
and we submit all these under your most glorious authority. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, loving and serving the Lord in one another. Thanks be to God.